How often should we be changing the fluid in our car? We're thinking about oil, the coolant, the brake fluid, the power steering fluid, and the transmission fluid. Now, we could err on the side of caution and say, just covering our backs, we should do it every year. But that is totally unnecessary for most of these fluids and in most vehicles. It's also very hard to come up with something that's definitive that applies to everything. There's a few exceptions. So we're going to isolate the slight differences between turbocharged vehicles, hybrid vehicles, and even diesel vehicles in some cases. These different engine configurations require slightly different levels of attention when it comes to these fluids. And some manufacturers insist that these fluids are for lifetime or have extremely long change periods. We want to keep our car as reliable as possible, running for as long as possible. And the question has been asked, how often should I change my X fluid? And this is the video for you. We're going to go into each of these fluids and just discuss how often we should be changing them. Engine oil. Manufacturers have sometimes even recommended two year, 24,000 mile change intervals. They've done that primarily to keep the fleets happy. You're running a fleet of cars and if you've got to service every one of them, you're paying a lot more money in servicing. Plus those cars are taken out of operation for a day or so, however long it takes to get the service carried out on them. Now, as far as fleets go, you probably won't see any significant deterioration while you have the car and it's new to three or five year period. When you go outside of that, the wear and tear starts to really become apparent. And it makes sense to up the oil change schedules, particularly if a manufacturer has specified really long intervals. Some people say five to 7,500 miles. Others say that with synthetics, you can go for 7,500 hundred to ten thousand miles the reality is it depends on how we use the car if we do lots of short trips the oil is taking a real beating from all the dilution that happens if we're doing a lot of cold starts and a lot of cold journeys that is going to impact the oil and also if we're doing periods of extreme high performance driving the oil temperatures will rise and fall and that will eventually lead to overall degradation of the oil as it collects all the other contaminants from the engine the best way of telling is to send your oil off for analysis and just see how it's faring. You only need to do that a few times and you'll establish a baseline for your engine and your use of the car. But if you don't want to do that, it's only about 30 to 50 pounds to get the oil analyzed. But if you if that's too much and you don't want to spend out that money, just err on the side of caution. Change the oil every nine months, certainly every 12 months for most vehicles and aim for about 7,000 to 9,000 miles. And that is a really good ballpark for protecting the engine. The oil should still be within its original specifications and just starting to show signs of degradation at those sorts of mileages. If you've got a turbocharged car, change the oil slightly more frequently. The turbocharger is running hot. You've got the exhaust gases in very close proximity to the oil channels in the turbo. And that leads to a lot of heat buildup within the oil. Hybrids tend to run cooler, so they don't require such frequent oil changes. If you have a hybrid vehicle, you can probably get closer to the manufacturer's recommendations without experiencing any degradation or poor effects. Coolant in the engine is something that most drivers don't really think about other than topping up. Now, the coolant is there to allow the engine to cool down. It actually aids the transmission of heat between the engine block and components and the coolant. So the additives that they put in there are beneficial for increasing the ability of the coolant to soak up the heat. But you also get protection in cold weather from freezing. So you've got an antifreeze inside the coolant. And it's generally the antifreeze component that starts to degrade. Now, some manufacturers' coolant specifications are claimed to last for 150,000 miles. Most, though, it's sensible to change this at the 30 to 50,000 mile range. You can actually get a little tester that you just fill with coolant and the little balls inside or the digital display will tell you how effective the antifreeze component of the coolant is. And if you experience very cold climates and the antifreeze is degraded, it makes sense to just change the coolant and get the correct specification. I've done other videos that go into the details of coolant specs, what they do, and the problems that we can have if we use an incorrect specification, particularly on Volkswagen vehicles. That's something I do a lot of and know a little bit about. In general, diesel vehicles require slightly more frequent coolant changes. The coolant tends to degrade more quickly in diesel engines. If you've got any idea as to why that is, 
let me know in the comments. With hybrid vehicles, often the coolant is also cooling the battery, keeping the battery temperatures down. And in those cases, it, it probably makes sense to change the coolant a bit more often. It's doing more work overall. Moving on to brake fluid, it's in a, a sealed environment. It's not exposed to the environment. It's not exposed to friction, but it is exposed to heat cycle. So when you use the brake, you're adding heat to the pads and eventually the brake fluid through the brake hoses will start to heat up. This heat is something that will degrade the brake fluid to a certain extent, but it is designed to operate in fairly high temperatures. The problem that you've got with brake fluid, though, is moisture from the atmosphere. Brake fluid is hygroscopic and it absorbs water very easily and very readily. And water is not very good at handling heat. You get water up to 100 degrees, depending on your altitude, obviously, and it'll boil. If you've got boiling fluid with inside the brake, you're going to end up with a spongy brake pedal and the brake is going to fail on you or let you down when it gets warm. Manufacturers generally recommend that this is changed every two to three years. Again, like the coolant, you can get a little thing that sucks up a little bit of brake fluid or goes into the brake fluid reservoir and just gives you a reading as to the condition of the brake fluid. It's good to check this annually. If you do track days, maybe bring that forward and do it every six months. But you can keep an eye on the condition of your brake fluid quite easily. And it is a major component in the car. You do kind of want your brakes to work when you need them to. There are a few high performance vehicles out there where the manufacturer recommends the brake fluid is changed every 12 months. And if that's the case, if you drive one of these high performance cars, do check the manufacturer's recommendations. Never go longer than the manufacturer's recommendations, but maybe always try to go slightly shorter to get those changes done a little bit sooner rather than later to protect your car. Transmission fluid, you get gearboxes now that are sealed for life. The transmission fluid in those is designed to last forever. Real world experience tells us something different. You do get benefits by changing the transmission fluid. If the transmission is subject to a lot of heat buildup, a lot of heat cycles, if the car is getting old, there may be other metal components that have broken off the transmission and are carried around in the transmission fluid. And that makes the transmission fluid itself abrasive, you start to increase the wear on the rest of the transmission. If I was to set a ballpark figure for changing the transmission fluid, it would generally be somewhere between 40,000 and 60,000 miles. If it's a CVT, a continuously variable transmission, I would err at the 30,000 bracket. So, and most drivers will be looking at doing that every two to three years, depending on your mileage, obviously. Dual clutch transmissions, you're generally looking at about 40,000 to 60,000 miles on those change intervals, even if the manufacturer says it's sealed for life. And with manual transmissions, which we still have quite a lot of here in the UK, about 30 to 50,000 miles. Again, check the manufacturer's recommendation. Don't exceed them, but bring them forward a little bit and get those fluids changed a bit more often. Power steering fluid. Well, a lot of manufacturers are moving over to electrically assisted steering and power steering fluid is becoming a thing of the past. But if your car does have a power steering reservoir, generally we'd recommend that between 50,000 and 100,000 miles, the system is flushed, drained and refilled. With some makers, um, I think in particular of Honda, they specify 30,000 mile changes on the power steering fluids. And if you're driving an off-road vehicle, a heavy duty vehicle, a vehicle with lots of weight, the power steering system is doing more work. There's more effort that it needs to put in to steer those wheels and to get the car moving in different directions. And it certainly makes sense to accelerate the change intervals on those vehicles. We know that a lot of luxury and European brands, particularly German cars, are requiring more frequent servicing, even though the manufacturers often set long life service intervals or extended service intervals. It makes a lot of sense to get these changed more often. Most of the issues you get with reliability problems on these high performance vehicles is down to a lack of maintenance. If the oil was changed more often than the manufacturer recommended, you wouldn't have the problems happening with worn piston rings, burning oil, turbocharger failures, and all the other common things that we often see but that's often down to neglect rather than the fact it is a European or a German car. A lot of these brands get exported to other countries and the expertise in maintaining them 
is not there. They've got used to the metal crates that the factories used to chuck out that weren't particularly fussy when it comes to the oil type used, the coolant type used, or the oil change interval. It really does pay to develop an expertise in your car and your engine. Understand fully the nuances, the weaknesses, the weak spots, the problems or the typical problems that you're likely to get. And in most cases, you can mitigate these or avoid them completely, and often just by extending the service intervals and getting things done more often. I hope you found this video really useful and informative and it's answered a lot of the questions that we've been getting through this channel through our forums and through the comments on our website thanks so much for watching please boot the like button that really does help us to get out there subscribe to the channel don't miss out on the content about 97 percent of you are not subscribed to the channel and that would really help us out and the algorithm would start to really love us if you do that so thanks for your support thanks for all your comments and i've lined this video and this playlist up for you that you should find really interesting Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.